In today's episode, we take a single 2D image and create an entire 3D animation just from that one image and a little bit of drawing. Let's do it. Tip tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we are taking a 2D image that I've got from a brilliant stock website, but more about that in a little bit. And we'll be using a combination of After Effects and Photoshop to turn it into this animated 3D image. You can see here that we have real 3D depth going on by separating out sections of the image into different layers, pushing those layers around in 3D space, and then finishing it off with a very cute little sleepy mushroom guy that we've just added in with a bit of frame by frame animation done in Procreate. So in this episode, we'll take you through this entire process. But before we do that, a little bit of a word from the sponsor of this episode. For this project, I used two websites, reshot.com and mixkit.co, who were kind enough to sponsor this video. I used reshot.com as a great place to get completely free stock photos with a commercial license that don't have that fake stock feeling. There's loads of choice and a nice little prompt on searches that helps you think of other ways to phrase your search, which is really useful. As for mixkit.co, they've got a solid collection of stock video clips, music, sound effects and templates, all available for free. Helpfully, they've also categorized all their assets, so finding some atmospheric music and sound effects for this tutorial was a complete breeze. If you're following along, and even if you're not, check out both websites now. All their content is free, so you've got nothing to lose. Reshot.com and Mixkit.co. All right, let's take our stock assets and get back to work. So you can download this mushroom image from the link in the description as well as the audio that I used. But the first step was just to take this image into Photoshop and decide which areas I wanted to use for which different layers. The first was to select all of these foreground elements with the pen tool, which believe me took a little bit of a while, and create a mask that just separates that out. Basically I took all of the undergrowth that was in front of the mushroom, uh, basically the parts that were in focus, and cut that out onto its own layer. And then duplicated the background layer again and created a new mask just for the mushroom. And we'll come back later on and use the clone stamp tool to create the missing chunk of the mushroom at the bottom. I then also removed this later on, but I added a second layer with just the small out of focus back part of the mushroom. This didn't look great when I pushed that into separate 3D space, so I undid that later. I then split the background into two different layers, one mid ground layer for this kind of ground half blurry section and then a full background layer with the rest. Here you can see me using the clone stamp tool in Photoshop to just select sections of the undergrowth and replace the uh, section where the mushroom stood. Not terribly important because of course the mushroom is still going to be on top of this but if there's any movement or scale or difference you might be able to see behind the mushroom slightly so just clone stamping where it used to be is quite important. For the background this is more important because in the end I decided to have the mushroom wiggle about a lot and obviously we needed to have that background behind it. it. Took me a few attempts to get it right but I found that just by sampling small sections and taking my time I could create something fairly convincing since it is out of focus. Once we had all of our different layers separated out the next step was to decide how to take these into After Effects. So I saved this as a Photoshop file and then just imported that Photoshop file into After Effects. It creates a composition for you and make sure you check retain layer sizes. Then I added a new camera with just layer, new and camera and added that to the scene. The camera is what we'll be using to navigate our 3D environment. So you can set up two views here, one view looking at the active camera and one view looking at the left hand side view of the layers. I think here at the moment is actually a top view. So when you convert your layers to 3D space and you change to the left hand view, you can push your layers back in 3D space and you'll see a representation of that on your left view camera. Here you can see I'm pushing that background further away from the camera's lens, which causes it to scale down. I'll just hide all of the other layers so that you can see it. This is now much further back in 3D space. Make sure you do have continuously rasterized turned off, otherwise your pre comp layers, which were folders in the Photoshop file, will not actually scale when you push them back in 3D space. So you can see I've pushed this way, way away from the camera and just scaled it up so that it once again fills the frame. And essentially we're trying to recreate the original scale of the um, photograph, but now 
in 3D space. So I'll just time lapse through the rest and you can see on that left hand view how far I've pushed them away from the camera, which is represented from that small rectangle on the right hand side of the leftmost viewing area. The next step was to push the mid-ground layer all the way back so that it was at the same Z depth as the background and then rotate it forwards, as you can see here, so that the ground plane is on a more horizontal axis. The reason you do this is because then it creates that illusion of depth. Uh, you can get away with just doing it with flat layers all standing upright on their y-axis. But If you rotate layers which are physically deep in the photo or would be physically deep in the photo, you can achieve a more realistic 3D effect because you're actually moving past those objects faster, if that makes sense. I just rotated it down until it was behind the foreground layers and then used a corner pin just to tweak the positioning of it, as you can see here slowing it down now to normal speed. You can see me just tweaking the corner pin to get rid of some of that distortion, which is very useful. Once you've got rid of that distortion, and also I've plonked my little mushroom gif uh, in there as well, which you can find in the description if you're following along, um, it was ready to basically start messing around with the colors to make this look a little bit more magical. So I applied a color control layer with color balance and I just dragged around the shadow and mid-tone red and reds and greens until I achieved more of a bluish hue. On top of that, I placed a solid with a gradient ramp, that gradient ramp, ramp running from red through to a lighter blue. I chose red to a lighter red at the start, but didn't like the effect that it got. So once I changed blending mode over to soft light to allow a lot of the light through, I decided to change this blending color to a red to blue gradient instead. Applying a deep glow, which is a plugin by plugin everything, but is essentially just a better, easier version to control than the standard After Effects glow, gives that kind of magical effect. The little mushroom guy, I duplicated his layer, turned the layer on top to multiply, and then masked out the top section along the same lines of what the top mushroom looked like in order to create a small shadow underneath this mushroom fella, and then just pressed the F key and dragged up the mask feather in order to soften that edge just a little bit. This worked fine, but I wanted a bit more of a shadow. So I duplicated that layer again and applied a inner shadow to the whole layer, which I then tweaked the properties of just by twirling down the inner shadow properties until the angle was coming from the top left and the shadow was very soft. And this created a nice kind of round effect to the mushroom. Uh, additionally, I then went ahead and added an inner glow as well, which I can use as a highlight. You're kind of getting something similar to a bevel and bot, bevel and emboss effect, um, but instead of doing it with one effect because it doesn't affect, it doesn't mask well to the shape of the mushroom, I did it with an inner shadow and an inner glow as well. So with the inner glow, I just positioned it the other edge of the inner shadow so that it complements it coming at the other way just to give that kind of fake effect of a more 3D rounded body. The mushroom himself, I'll just pop this up in an overlay now. Um, I just drew him in Procreate, frame by frame, a very simple piece of frame by frame animation for him breathing in and out as he snores and sleeps the day away under this mushroom. So nothing special going on there. And I just exported it as a GIF. I toyed with putting him behind the foreground, which in the end, I can't remember if I decided whether I liked it or not but I thought about applying a tilt shift effect. To do that, I just created a new adjustment layer on top, made it very blurry with a simple Gaussian blur, and then double clicked the shape layer tool with the circle selected to create a circular mask. I then pulled the positions on the path points of this mask around until I got a shape that I liked, essentially trying to create a level of blur on the top and bottom of the frame. This, when you change the mask mode from add to subtract, and increase the feather amount quite a bit, you can see creates a really nice tilt shifting effect. I believe I actually increased it a bit more after this, but I just tweaked the mask so I got this kind of vague S lump shape, which created a nice um, thin layer of blur along the top and bottom of the composition as well. You can see here at this point, I decide to animate the camera by adding a bit of wiggle 
We just have two keyframes where the camera moves forward in Z space, but by adding a small amount of wiggle to those keyframes, you get a more realistic camera movement. And here at this point, I increased the blur on the tilt shift by quite a dramatic amount. This created a little bit of light around the edges of the composition, which I wasn't too much of a fan of. So again, I added to the same adjustment layer a uh, black fill. Uh, sorry, on a solid above the adjustment layer, I added a black fill, which I did the same masking effect for, this time leaving it in a perfect circle. Increased the feather to create a nice blurry vignette and change the blending mode to multiply. Then just reduced the opacity so it wasn't quite so overwhelming and increased the scale a touch so that it wasn't uh, too far into the scene. The final effect was to create some nice fairy lights. So using CC Particle World, I just used a faded sphere particle with the physics on directional axis and the velocity turned way way down just to create these floating kind of um, particle light effects as well. The final step then was to go inside my mushroom composition and place three very simple pins in it with the puppet pin tool all along the stalk which allowed me to wiggle the mushroom back and forth. I also went in and added some starch pins to the bottom so they didn't wiggle around too much, although this was luckily covered up by the foreground that we used in the beginning, so you can't actually see the bottom of the mushroom wiggling around too much. Just adding these starch pins though does fix any potential problems. And I added some very simple keyframes to animate this mushroom. I didn't want it to do too much, so what I did was just pin uh, keyframe all of the pins and have it wiggle back and forth, I think once or perhaps twice over the entire 10 seconds. Here you can see me messing around with the keyframes until I got a timing that I liked and I decided on something a bit more subtle. So let's take a look at the final result. As you can see, you can get a really good effect with this with just a little bit of time and patience. And the best way to create something like this is just to have a go. So download those files from the links in the description, have a go yourself. You should be able to get the mushroom there, the audio files that I used for the magical forest sound and the animated gif of the sleeping mushroom so thank you very much for watching everybody i hope you enjoyed this tutorial thank you for uh, watching all the way to the end and just for you lucky people as well you get to take part in a little quiz um, which is just i'd like you in the comments below to just post whether you prefer this style of tutorial where i have made something in the past and i'm talking over my process or whether you prefer my normal style of tutorial where you're going through the entire process with me in real time just experimenting a little bit seeing if this is a way to create more content for the channel let me know what you think in the comments below thank you ever so much and i'll see you next time for another episode of tip Tart. Massive thank you to my level 2 and above members, WN62, Ian Costello, Katmar, Rob V, Jason Carl Ruddy, MP, Dima Zua, Fall of Furs, Melem Hoover, Two Steps to Chill, Josh Colon, Ursula Fermanska, The Saucier, Lali Lulelo X, Andrew Hammond, Jenna Kerry, Jarbs Animations, Sergio Degalado, Ralika M, Narain Abdilla, Barbara Reznor, Lone Wolf 16, and Era D. You guys are super duper lovely people. If you'd like to join the Tip Tart Zone and become a Tip Titan yourself, consider by clicking that join button below. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.